Welcome to the last service of 2023 at First Congregational Church in Guilford, Connecticut. We are fond of saying whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome and wanted at First Church. Now, if you'll notice today, I'm standing at Alderbrook Cemetery, which is near our church. A lot of our ancestors are buried here. And although their physical bodies were buried here, their experiences, their influence remain with us today. The same thing happens as we move into a new year. There are plenty of things that we would like to keep behind us from 2023, but the influence and the experience of that year has shaped and formed us. And at the end of this service, Reverend Riley Page will offer us an opportunity to let go of some of those things as we move forward into 2024. Just as our ancestors have taught us many lessons, we stand here at the end of the year thinking about what 2023 has taught us. What have we learned? What has it brought us? Well, we know that our compassion has increased because we have gathered together in unity with those in the Ukraine, with those with the Israel and, and in also in Gaza. We have felt our hearts break as we've watched war and conflict come out. We have prayed for, sent funds to, signed petitions for those who experience flooding and earthquakes and tornadoes. We know that people are working diligently to help care for our earth and our climate. The hole in the ozone layer is shrinking. For the first time in a hundred years, people can swim in the Paris River again. We've watched improvements with medical technology and treatments. We have witnessed the um, joy of the Wales soccer teams receiving equal pay or in Nepal. Uh, equal marriage becoming part of their system. We know that the first time an African country, uh, South Africa, has now uh, shared parental leave. We see these improvements around the world and yet we also, you know, feel concern for AI, the gift and the curse of it. We also know that this year has seemed to be the hottest year on record for researchers say for the past 125,000 years that 2023 has been the warmest year ever. Many treasures have been returned to the uh, countries of origin after being stolen and placed in museums. Um, we see that life goes back and forth. There is a rhythm, we are joyful and then we experience sorrow, but the entire time we who embrace faith have a chance, an opportunity to know that there is a deeper joy that resides in us. The scripture today is from uh, Corinthians and it reads that God, that Jesus has made all things new. If we are in Christ, all things pass away and all has been made new. I think the spirit of that is the things that we need to let go, we can let go that which hinders us, we can release. The lessons learned from our ancestors, the lessons learned from our past, those experiences who make us who we are, we keep. But the things that hold us back, those moments in which we doubt ourselves, the moments in which we don't feel um, that we are enough, the moments in which we don't feel loved or lovable or we are loving, let those go and move differently into this world now. We have some opportunities to think about what we have learned, to realize where we can go and what we can become if we work together as a unit, as a collective, as people who are willing to be countercultural, if you will, as our politics inevitably will heat up in 2024, let us not do the same. Maintain um, our sense of compassion and just peace. As we talked about on Christmas Eve, transforming love, let us focus there. When people become in, 
so enraged by politics, step back, refuse to go there, be direct, be firm, be settled in the cause for being with those who need support, love, and help. Do not become part of the anger that seems to fuel our system. Let us learn from our past. Let us be different as we move forward. Let us find support systems and people in which we can talk and share our frustrations and let them go so that we can go out to do positive and good things in this world. May we continue to learn how to love one another, to affirm each other, and to release those things that do not serve us well. May Riley help us with that now. Happy New Year and peace. On this New Year's Eve, we are gonna celebrate a tradition that I call New Year's Absolutions. This is a ritual where you will bring forward a piece of paper with something you'd like to leave in 2023. A guilt, a conflict, a mood, uh, a situation that you would like to unburden yourself from. And I will gather up all those pieces of paper, take them home, and say a blessing over them as they burn. And as the smoke ascends, we set our intentions to a lighter, freer, more focused 2024. If you would like to participate in this and you're not able to be with us in worship in person, feel free to email me at Riley, spelled R-E-I-L-L-Y, at firstchurchguilford.org, and you can include as little or as much detail as you'd like, and I will hold that confidentially and add that to the burn pile for New Year's absolutions tonight. So may you be um, unburdened and free to enter 2024 with a clean slate and welcome the new year ready for all that God has in store for you. May you be blessed. In years past, New Year's Day was a day when Protestants would be in church. It was considered a, a feast day, if you will. Um, and uh, Charles Wesley wrote specific hymns for New Year's. So did Isaac Watts. In the German tradition, the hymn that was sung was Das alte Jahr vergangen ist. The old, and in translation, it, it sounds like this. The old year now has passed. We thank you, Jesus Christ, that you have protected us so mercifully in such great danger this year. Help us to leave off sinning and begin to grow faithful. Grant us a year rich in grace. So this is uh, Johann Sebastian Bach's Chorale Prelude on the hymn Das Atajar Fengangenist. <laughs> 